Okay guys, here we are with the Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition Dynasties of India Expansion Pack. Now, I've been paying a lot of attention to the news, the leaks, the, the teasers, and the puzzles, but they've just announced the actual civilization, and this is sort of a, a, an immediate reaction to this. So I've, I've not seen the official news yet, and uh, let's dive in. Okay, now I have not clicked the video. Maybe I'll watch that in a second, but I'm all about the text, so let's go ahead and dive in here. Three new civilizations. All right, the Bengalis are first. Navigate the winding rivers and dense dungeons of Bengal as you build a thriving economy to fuel unstoppable armies of elephantos. The Bengali unique unit is the Ratha, a sturdy chariot that can switch between melee and ranged attack modes. That's pretty cool. I remember uh, listening to a video with uh, an interview with Sandy Peterson where he talks about the original plan for the samurai was to be able to do that, but they, they couldn't really figure out the coding or it didn't it didn't feel right. So it's really cool to see that mechanic come back with their unique unit, the Ratha. The Bengalis focus on elephant and naval units. Bengali elephants, in addition to benefiting from a strong tech tree, are more resistant to anti-elephant bonus damage than those of other civilizations. Additionally, their attack speed can be boosted by researching the unique technology Pikes, which also improves Rathas. Bengali ships regenerate hit points, increase their longevity. These strengths are built on the back of a strong economy. Bengali town centers automatically spawn additional vills whenever each age, whenever each next age is researched. And the Bengalis can support a larger economy after researching the unique technology Mahayana, which reduces the amount of population space that each villager takes up. Wow. Finally, Bengali trade units and those of their allies generate food in addition to the gold that is accumulated during each trip to and from an allied market. So here we go. Elephant units receive 25% less bonus damage and are more resistant to conversion. Town centers spawn two vills when the next age is reached. Ships regenerate 15 HP per minute. Okay, that's pretty cool. So the elephant unit, uh, it looks to me like they're going to be a very, very strong elephant civilization. Maybe the elephant civilization. So... If you love elephants, if you are Kalimitar back in the Noob Cup, and you are wanting to go into your elephants, this is a civilization that should catch your eye. That's pretty cool. So, pikemen are going to do less, albany are going to do less, camels are going to do less, and monks are going to do less. So, they are much better suited to have elephants as an all-around general, uh, you know, cab unit. It's pretty cool. The Mahayana unique tech... Uh, let's keep going here. So Town Center spawned two villas when the next age is reached. Now that's kind of cool. I don't think it's the biggest bonus in the world because what it what it means effectively, whenever you tech up from the Dark Age to the Feudal Age, the Feudal Age research time takes about the same amount as three villagers, right? So it's three villagers worth of time cost to research that age up. Well now... If you're playing Bengalis, you're getting two villagers at the end, so essentially you're only paying one villager to tech up. That's pretty neat. It does help you out a lot with a rush. I am not sure how useful it'll be. Okay, you go from feudal to castle edge, you get two more villas. That's nice. That's a nice bonus. And then you'd have to pop down a lot of town centers, you know, four or five TCs in order to get, what, 10 villas, 12 villas? With that final tech up from Castle to Imperial Age. I don't know. It doesn't seem the biggest bonus in the world for me. It is definitely useful if you're wanting to do some kind of rush. And have, um, you know, a, a, an economy behind that. And I can see the bonus with the Mahayana. If you have this as your game plan, you are going to be able to afford so many more vills than other civilizations in the late game. You're going to have maybe the best economy in the game. It's got to be up there. So maybe you are planning on going 4 or 5 TC's. And in that case, this bonus is even more useful. But as it is, you're getting two from Dark to Feudal, two from Feudal to Castle, and then, I don't know, six, eight, maybe ten vills from Castle to Imperial. So, it's not bad, but not the biggest bonus. Ships regenerate 15 HP per minute. Now, I think this is a really cool bonus for something like Nomad, you know, a... Uh, uh, where you're you're fighting with just one or two ships and you're trying to you know, do what you can with just a few ships, this sort of bonus could be really nice. I, I guess it's nice in a, a late game situation too if you have big hordes of uh, ships and and you know they they're all kind of damaged you know, so that that's 
kind of a nice bonus. I don't think it makes them a naval powerhouse, but there's there's some potential there. Okay, so the Ratha, strong versus infantry, weak versus skirmishers and camel riders. Yeah, I bet. I mean, what is the counter to this? Uh, it's a chariot, so it's probably a cav unit. You 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 go up with you know pikemen, halberdier. But then, um, you know that you they if you're going up against them with skirm, I'm sorry, with uh, pikemen then you're just able to switch into ranged mode and kite them and shoot them down that way. They are weak versus skirmishers. I guess that's good to know. I wonder how weak because I'm thinking, okay, well, you just switch to melee mode and then you run down the skirmishers, right? But maybe if they take a lot of bonus damage versus skirmishers, it does give them a clear weakness. So we'll see. And then camel riders is the other option. And that, that makes more sense to me. Where, you know, the ranged attack may not do a whole lot. The melee attack, well, you're just getting into camel rider range, so I'm looking forward to playing around with Ratha. That should be cool. Armored Elephant. Anti-building cavalry unit. Wait, let me scroll up here. Do we see the armored elephants anywhere? I don't know that I see them in this picture. Let's see. Uh, do we even see the Ratha? This is an elephant archer over here. A couple elephant archers, elephant rider. There's a, uh, I don't think that's the armored elephant. There were, uh, in the leaked pictures or in the teasers leading up to the um, the reveal here, you, you see this uh, elephant with just heavy, like, uh, not chain mail, but like heavy mail armor and uh, like a flail on the tusks. And, you know, you can just tell like it's supposed to be a battering ram. Anti-building cavalry. And that's what this essentially is, I think is sort of a replacement for the battering ram. It's resistant to most ranged attacks, weak versus melee units, cannot be converted by enemy moments forward from a distance. So I don't know if it's literally a replacement for the ram, or if it is a, um, again, kind of a an alternative, but I would consider this an alternate version of the ram, which is probably even more resistant to most damage, probably can do better damage against most units than a ram can, so it's kind of a, a half you know, cab unit, half battering ram, but probably is, of course, very weak to, um, you know, pikemen and halberdier than normal. Uh, pikes, Horathus and elephant units attack 20% uh, faster, that's cool. Mahayana, villagers take 10% less population space. That's very cool. That is very cool indeed. And then the trade bonus, team bonus. Trade units yield 10% food in addition to gold. Uh, yeah, that's nice, and that'll help you with that villager economy. So I see them as very strong late game. I mean, elephants are typically a late game unit. The eco really kicks into gear in the late game with Mahayana. That's cool. Cool if you're uh, a fan of the late game civilization. Next we have the Dravidians. Seize control of the lucrative Indian Ocean trade routes and utilize advanced metallurgy as you build one of the wealthiest sea empires of medieval Asia. The Dravidian unique units are the Urumi Swordsman, a warrior wielding a scathing, flexible sword, and the Therisadai, a massive vessel that dominates the high seas. Dravidians focus on infantry and naval units, cheaper barracks techs, a strong tech tree, the devastating Urumi Swordsman unique unit, and the unique tech Woods Steel, which causes infantry and cavalry attacks to ignore the armor of enemy units, makes Dravidian infantry among the most formidable in the game. Okay. Increased carry capacity for fishing ships and fishermen, as well as the fact that their docks and those of their allies provide additional pop room. Upon advancing to each next age, the Dravidians receive 200 additional wood that can be put towards a variety of uses and strategies. Cool, cool. So, all right, let's dive into this. Dravidians. Receive 200 plus wood when advancing to the next age. Now, this is pretty cool, and I can see this going two ways. Either you take advantage of this by maybe putting it into a rush that's wood heavy, something like an archer rush, right? So you get all of those extra resources, and that means that you can keep the rush going um, and maybe even keep your economy going with that extra wood while you go into the rush. Or you actually take put fewer villagers on wood early on. Do something like a scout rush, right? And then when you go up to the feudal age, you aren't suffering as much because you've gone all in on food to get the scouts out. You don't have as much on wood. Well, bam, 200 additional wood right there when you hit the next age, and... That serves as kind of a band-aid as you get the economy going behind that scout rush, right? Or, you know, a men-at-arms rush or something like that, right? Fishermen and fishing ships carry have plus 15 additional food carry capacity. That's pretty cool. 
it, again, I'm thinking nomad possibilities or island possibilities, they would be very strong on the eco side of things. And then they have that uh, Theresadai, right? Uh, and I, by the way, don't take me some sort of authority when it comes to pronunciation. Uh, but I'm liking this. That means their economy is going to be really strong. Barracks text cost 50% less. Now, I have not run the numbers on this. Like I said, I'm just running into it. But, yeah, that's really helpful. In That means your, your militia line techs are cheaper. Your spearman line techs are cheaper. Things like um, supplies, arson, squires... All of that is 50% cheaper, so you have a very, very, very strong barracks, right? It's very easy to take into that. And then skirmishers and elephant archers attack 25% faster. So that kind of confirms for me that elephant archers are a regional unit, right? Because that's not a unique unit there. Um, so, yeah, I, I think we're definitely seeing a shakeup for the Indian civilization. They're, uh, okay, they're all attacking 25% faster, so that's pretty cool. So... If you're going heavy to infantry, the response that you're likely to get from your enemy is archers. Well, you have better skirmishers and better elephant archers to deal with that. So that's pretty neat. I like the idea of an infantry elephant archer combination. That would be pretty cool. Unique units, buildings, and techs. Okay, the Arumi Swordsman, Dravidian unique infantry unit which can charge its attack. So probably like an infantry version of the Custilier, I'm going to guess. Right? Strong versus buildings and infantry, weak versus archers at long range. So even it's even saying at long range. So they probably do a good job against the archers if they can get in close. But a mass of archers will wipe out a mass of the Arumi swordsmen. Armored elephant, anti-building. Whoa! Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Armored elephant is back. Oh, do we have? Is this like a regional unit then? The armored elephant. Okay. All right. A little asterisk on that one there. And the Therisidae, Dravidian unique warship that fires multiple projectiles, strong versus warships. I have been doing some reading on the forums suggesting that the Therisidae might be like a, uh, a naval version of the Bohemian War Wagon, right? So it, it might, maybe it's like armored up and it can shoot a bunch of projectiles and, and you know, kind of serves as a support unit for these other, uh, for, your, for your navy behind it. We'll see. Unique tech, medical core. Elephant units regenerate 20 HP per minute. Useful if you are using elephant archers as kind of your, not front line obviously, but your response to archers in order to keep your infantry horde going, right? You mass up elephant archers, well they're taking chip damage. They're, they're getting shot at, taking damage from enemy archers, but you know, they're surviving. Medical core would be pretty nice. And then wood steel, infantry and cavalry attacks ignore armor. Uh, Hothir was telling me the other day, like, this tech makes the Dravidians the Teutons' worst nightmare, and they are exactly right, of course. I mean, I have not run the numbers. I'll wait for the Spirit of the Law video, just like you guys, but the incredible potential that you have to mass up infantry and then say, yeah, all of all of that armor that you've got, we, we're ignoring that. Um, that's massive. That is absolutely massive. Team bonus. Docks provide plus five pop. -up. Oh, they have a tech tree button. Oh, that's cool. Okay, we're gonna look at that in a second, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just go through the last of these. The Gur the Gurjaras. Again, my pronunciation, Gurjaras. Ride swift mounts across the fertile fields and open plains of western India and unleash diverse armies of sturdy warriors upon your enemies. The Gurjara unique units are the Shrivamsha Rider, a speedy cab unit that can dodge enemy at what? A cab unit that can dodge enemy attacks. And the Chakram Thrower, an infantry unit that unleashes volleys of deadly metal discs. Gujaras also begin the game with a Camel Scout instead of a Scout Cavalry, and can train more Camel Scouts starting the Feudal Age. The Gujaras focus on Cavalry and Camelry. Their mounted units deal additional bonus damage against the enemy units that they counter, while their Camelry and Elephants, and those of their teammates, also train faster. Gujara Camelry also benefit from additional armor once the unique tech frontier guards is researched. Gujara also benefit from a variety of useful economic bonuses. They begin the game with two additional forage bushes near their TCs, or their initial TC, and they can garrison livestock inside of mills to slowly but indefinitely generate food instead of slaughtering them with bills. Gujara docks can be garrisoned by fishing ships, allowing theirs and those of their allies to take refuge when under attack. Cool, cool, cool. Finally, researching the unique tech Kishatriyas reduces the food costs 
of all military units, making them more affordable and easy to mass. All right. So you start the game with two forage bushes. Can garrison mills with livestock to produce food? This right here, let me talk about this first. I'm going to guess that this is the build order you want to do. You're going to want to start the game killing sheep anyway. The reason for that is because sheep give you such a spike of food that you need right out of the gate in order to produce more villagers. I am guessing, to my understanding, the forage bushes gather food too slowly. So typically, like on an Arabia arena match, you have eight sheep around your base. I'm going to guess you're probably going to want to take out the first four like normal. First four, and then you put four onto wood, then you get one on boar, and you get your boar, right? But then with the remaining four sheep, you throw them into the mill, and they serve as essentially food relics for the rest of the game. That's pretty neat. Um, I could be wrong. Maybe the bushes gather fast enough, and, you know, you could just put all of them into the mill, but I doubt that'll work for all of them. We'll see. But I do suggest that's why you start the game with two forge bushes, is because you do need some food more immediately. And so they give you those extra bushes just to kind of help patch up your food ego early on while you're taking advantage of this bonus. Mounted units deal 50% bonus damage. Now, <coughs> excuse me. It does say up here, their mounted units deal additional bonus damage against the enemy units that they counter. So I don't know whether that means... Like, when I read this, that suggests to me, oh, well, they just do more damage. Their units are just better. But I think what they're actually saying is 50% bonus damage. So camels, for example, do way more damage to knights than normal, which is kind of cool. Uh, and, and seeing as you can, one of the things I noticed, I don't, they don't mention it here, but you start the game with a camel scout, right? And you can build camel scouts that, if I am correct upgrade into camel riders in the castle age so what you could do is mat like if you're dealing with the franks or the lithuanians some kind of super heavy cav civ you start massing up camel scouts out of the gate and they are going to counter any kind of scout rush that's pretty cool then you hit the castle edge you tech up your camel scouts into camel riders and now the camel riders you know uh do 50 percent bonus damage against enemy knights that's pretty neat that is very very neat you just have to be aware, of course, of, you know, spearmen and pikemen and that kind of thing. Can garrison docks with fishing ships? One more time, guys. I'm thinking Nomad. I'm thinking Islands. And, and this is an incredible bonus in my experience. I don't know about the pros, but in the, like, the, the Squires Cup, right? The Wandering Squires Cup that I just took part in. And I think the finals I just posted the other day. Um, one of the things that we saw rather consistently with your Nomad strats was to get out two or three fire galleys or two or three galleys and rush the enemy's uh, you know, fishing ship economy immediately and try to get damage done there and get an eco lead going out of the gate. And your response has to be get you know, your own navy out right away and, and push back, repel that invasion, right? Well, here, what this would allow you to do as the Gujara is instead you can just garrison your fishing ships and you're buying yourself time while the enemies, you know, two or three galleys or fire galleys are attacking the docks. You can, within your docks, kind of build up a, a big ball of naval pressure. And then you can sort of respond at your leisure and you don't have to worry about your fishing ships getting blown up. So I think this is an extremely useful bonus, especially for competitive nomad games. Maybe Nomad's just on the mind because I've been playing in the Squires Cup, but, you know, that's what jumps to my mind. Unique units, buildings, and techs. We have the Chakram Thrower. Gurjara unique infantry unit with ranged melee attacks. Strong versus infantry, weak versus archers, and siege weapons. I've heard some people suggest that maybe it's sort of a uh, Gurjara version of the hand cannon, essentially, like this anti-infantry infantry. And it's a ranged melee attack, so kind of like the... Frank throwing axemen, right? So it'll be interesting to see how they are different from throwing axemen, but pretty cool. Pretty cool. And again, seeing as, kind of like the throwing axemen, seeing as your game plan is going to be to go heavy into knights or cavalry, and then the response will likely be pikemen, halberdier, having the chakram throwers is uh, will be a really good counter to pikemen. So that's pretty neat. 
Shrivamsha Rider. Now, we do see the Armored Elephant again. I want to point that out real quick. So, yeah, Armored Elephants for all three of these sieves. Shrivamsha Rider. Gujarat, a unique light cav unit which can dodge projectiles. I have no idea what that means. I'm wondering if that means, like, if you get hit with an arrow as a Shrivamsha Rider, there's a 50% chance it does zero damage or something like that. I, I have no idea. We've got to look this up. You know, we'll, we'll have to... This will be interesting. Weak versus pikemen and camel riders. Okay, okay. That makes sense. So, a, basically a scout unit that also <coughs> will do a very good job of taking out archers. Is what I'm gathering there. And then, of course, the armored elephant. Camel scout. Strong versus cav. Monks and archers. The unique text. Kishatrias. Military units cost 25% less food. That's incredible. Again, a, a huge eco bonus there. All your military units cost 25% less food. So, uh, especially if you're going into elephants, they cost a lot of food. Not anymore. Not with Kishatrias. Frontier guards, camel riders, and elephant archers gain plus four melee armor. So, I'm almost seeing this now. I don't know. Do we see... Uh, it almost looks to me like kind of a version of what they did with the Indians. And I don't know if the Indians are still even in the game. We're about to find out. But, you know, the, the thought was make camels uh, sort of a replacement for the knights. And I, I'm sort of seeing that as... I don't know. They, they, let's see. Do they even have the knights? We got we to gotta figure this out. I'm pulling this up right now. So, in your stable. All right. You got the camel scout. It does upgrade to the camel rider. So, I was, I was right about that. You have the Shrivamsha rider. Yeah. So, you don't get knights. So yeah, you're, you're setting up your camels as sort of a replacement for the knights, and that tech is very useful for that. Uh, the Shrivamsha Rider then is sort of an alternative to the scout. I'm going to guess it costs gold, but it's more like a scout with anti-archer power. That's my suspicion. Yeah, Frontier Guards, it, all, all of the bonuses there make sense. So you're using camels as your knight replacement. All right. Three new fully voiced campaigns. Amazing if you are all about your single player game. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip all of this though. Here we go. Yes, Indians are being replaced with the Hindustanis. Now I'm really excited for this because the leaks that were out there, the the one thing that was really obscured were the Indians. Now I we kind of figured out that they were gonna be replaced by the Hindustanis, but I have no idea what their approach their their way to their approach to the game is going to be we don't know that any of the bonuses so i kind of had a hint with some of the others but these are all new for me the hindustanis focus on camelry and gunpowder units okay wait wait the unique units are the gulam a heavily armored infantry unit adept against masses of archers whoa and the imperial camel rider a powerful unique upgrade to the heavy camel rider okay that's like the old indian sieve Hindustani is focused on camel and companion units. Camelry attack faster than those of other sieves and deal additional damage to buildings, while their gunpowder units are more heavily armored than their counterparts. The Hindustanis can also research the unique tech Shata Shatagni, which increases the range of hand cannoneers. Now that's old. Villas are less expensive than those of other sieves. The unique technology Grand Trunk Road boosts all sources of gold income. Okay, so there's a rename from Sultans to Grand Trunk Road, but otherwise it's the same thing. Additionally, they can construct the Caravanserai, a building that heals and increases the speed of trade units within its vicinity. Whoa. This sieve is available to play without the purchase of Dynasty of India. So, we're getting this for free. Vills cost... Okay, this is old. Yep. 10, 10 15, 20, 25. Camel Riders attack 25% faster. Now, I don't think... I'm actually going to go ahead and check this out. I've got the game pulled up. So let me check that out real quick. Yeah, no, the, the old bonus used to be uh, that their stable units got plus one pierce armor, right? But they don't get that anymore. So the scout rush is not as strong as it used to be, but the camel riders attack 25% faster. Uh, so that's made, this means that the camels are probably not as good as the, was it the Dravidians, right? But... They are really, really good. So you're getting more damage. So you're doing more bonus damage to enemy knights and that sort of thing. Uh, so again, very nice there. Gunpowder units get plus one melee, plus one pierce armor. Th suddenly, you know, the, the they used to have Shatagni, and that was sort of their main 
uh, gunpowder bonus. But now they're going really heavy into gunpowder. They are way tougher than other gunpowder units. That's pretty cool. So I'm thinking hand cannons, not to mention bombard cannons. This is pretty neat. Uh, sturdy gunpowder units. I like it. And then the Car Caravanserai. This is really interesting to me. I'm wondering if there's anything that they do or if it's just this passive speed up and heal thing. So you build Caravanserai, a bunch of them, between your uh, you know, your uh, trade center and your allies' trade center. And then the trade units are just zooming by and, and getting gold that much faster for you. And it being that much harder to raid because... You know, they, uh, because they heal up. So you can't do chip damage against trade units. You've got to knock them out if you're going to raid at all. Okay. Unique unit, the Ghulam. Okay, infantry unique unit that thrusts its spear through multiple targets. So kind of an infantry version of the Step Lancer is what I'm gathering. They have, I'm guessing they have bonus damage versus archers, because otherwise I don't see this being good enough to make them anti-archer. So, uh... I don't think the range is enough, but I'm guessing they have bonus damage versus archers or maybe additional pierce armor, right? One or the other. Strong versus archers and then weak versus cavalry. That is amazing to me because that is exactly the opposite of what I would have expected. Looking at this unit, and we can we can see these guys at the Ghulam right here. You see an infantry unit with this long spear-like, you know, unit, and you think they must be anti-cavalry, uh, anti right? I could imagine... The Ghulam is this DLC's version of the Genoese Crossbowman. This is going to be the unit that a bunch of people get confused about how to counter. They're going to go heavy into archers to try to deal with the infantry. And then like, wait a minute, why is this not working? And you don't realize the, what the bonus damage actually is and how you're actually supposed to counter them. Well, maybe I'm wrong, but we'll see. And then the Imperial Camel Rider, and that's old. Economic building. Heals and increases the speed of trade carts in a tentile radius. Unique building of the Hindustanis. I'm going to pull up the tech tree to see. Do they get anything? Like any kind of text there? Does it? What's it do? Unique text. Okay. All gold income 10% faster. That's just like old sultans. She taught me hand cannoneers plus two range. Now, I am a little curious about this. So, I think old... Let me just check. Yeah, Shatagni, the old one, gave it plus one range. So now this is plus two range to your hand cannoneers. And I had heard tell from people in the past saying Shatagni was one of the worst unique techs in the game because hand cannoneers have this built-in um, ability to miss, right? They're, they're going to misfire. And if you're giving them, and when you give them plus one range, they are more likely to miss their target than before. So now you're giving them plus two range. Now they're really going to miss their unit. So I'm wondering, do they have any kind of built-in additional accuracy? Or is the thought process that this is a tech for the late game, when you've masked up a huge horde of hand cannons, you are fighting against a mass horde of, you know, knights or infantry or whatever, and misfires don't mean so much because if you miss the one guy you're aiming at, you're just going to hit the guy next to him anyway. So maybe, maybe you know, a drop in accuracy is just not that important for the uh, Hindustanis. Team bonus, camel and light cavalry units plus two attack versus buildings. Now, it used to be camel units plus four attack versus buildings, so it's a reduced, you know, bonus against buildings, but you are combining that. First off, it's added up to scouts now, so their scout rush, uh, you lose the pierce armor, but now they are going to be more effective at raiding and, and destroying buildings, so that's that's kind of neat. Um, and then with your camels, they are also attacking faster, so you're getting that plus two attack more often than before. So I don't know whether it evens out. My the math in my head says it's probably still a little weaker than it used to be, but all right. Okay, pre-order now. Uh, I don't know about you guys, I'm doing that. All right, before we go, I'm gonna pull up the tech tree real quick. So. Archery range. Uh, so you do get Arbalest. You are missing out on Thumb Ring. So, uh, and then you do get fully, okay, you got the full blacksmith text for your archers. So the archers are not terrible. The loss of Thumb Ring does hurt. You are firing less accurately. You are firing less often. Um, I can see though what they really want you to do is Look at that elephant archer. And this does confirm, by the way, yes, the elephant archer is a regional unit. It's 
So that's pretty neat. Um, Parthian Tactics will help your Elephant Archers, obviously, because you don't get the usual Cav Archer. So, Elephant Archers, really nice options. You could go with your usual, like, Archer Rush into Arbalest, but the lack of Thumb Ring kind of dissuades you from doing that. Uh, okay, Barracks, you do have Champion, you have Halberdier, you do have the full Blacksmith Techs for them. You miss out on Supplies, but you do get Squires and Arson, so pretty good mainline uh, barracks there. I like that. All right, stables. Uh, okay, you, so you have scouts and a light calf. You have no knights, no camels, no step. Okay, yes. So, the pro, you have amazing battle elephants. Con, you have nothing else. <laughs> I mean, you do have the scout calf, so you, you can fight in the late game, you know, trash wars. Even then, you're missing Hussar, so maybe not the best, you know, scouts in the game but amazing battle elephants but no knights no camels if you're going into the stables you are committed to battle elephants you do get bloodlines you do get husbandry you have the full blacksmith tech there i'm sorry i was i said earlier that you had the full stable on i was looking at the infantry you are missing out on plate mail armor so you do miss the final infantry armor tech which is a, a big thing big deal maybe not the biggest but it is pretty big to miss out on that so that's infantry okay but yeah, you have amazing elephants, but that's all you've got. In the Siege Workshop, so yes, you have the Armored Elephant as a replacement for the Battering Ram. I called it. Cool. I'm going to guess, again, the, uh, the Armored Elephant probably does more damage to, like, in a pinch. You know, if you have infantry attacking your Armored Elephant, the Armored Elephant can probably do something about it in a way that the Battering Ram can't. So that's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to exploring with these guys. Also, it looks like you only have the one tech from armor to siege. So I wonder how the siege ram, I'm sorry, the siege elephant compares to the cap ram. How does it compare to the siege ram? Interesting. Uh, otherwise, siege workshop, you got onager. Do you have, going over to the university, you do have siege engineers. That's cool. So you got that, but you don't have the siege onager. You have the heavy scorpion. Okay, pretty neat. You don't have bombard cannon. Almost a full blacksmith tech. All right, docks. The docks look pretty good. You've got almost a fully upgraded dock. You just don't have the heavy demo heavy demo ship, right? Otherwise, you you got everything. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, I, I see in all of these civilizations, except maybe the Hindustanis. I didn't see anything about the Hindustanis that was uh, you know good for your navy. So I don't I don't think they they've got a very strong naval presence. You know, they're missing out, of course, on the that fishing eco they used to have as the Indians. They don't have that anymore. Right, so, um, yeah, but the Bengalis here, they've, uh, they've got a pretty good naval tech. And the castle, okay, you got the Ratha, right, right, right. And I think that pretty much, okay, monastery, missing on heresy, you've got everything else, so pretty good monastery, I'm, I'm happy with that. Do, 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 do. Okay, mining camps look good. Uh, the eco techs are almost all here. Look solid. Bengalis look very strong. All right, Dravidians, they're up next, the infantry, naval sieve. All right, here we go. Archery range. You've got the Arbalester. You've got skirmishers. You've got hand cannons, elephant archers. Again, you don't have the Cav Archer, but... Oh, and you don't have Parthian Tactics, but you do have Thumb Rings. So that's interesting. The Bengalis have the tankier uh, elephant archers. These guys have maybe the more accurate elephant archers. Now, Parthian Tactics, if I remember right. Well, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, 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 no. So... Yeah, these guys have the more accurate, faster-firing elephant archers. The Bengalis have the tankier elephant archers, because Parthian Tactics does give you that additional armor and pierce armor and that sort of thing. So, interesting shift there. Um, okay, in the stable. So, wow, their stable's terrible. So you have, again, you only go up to Lycav, no Hussar. You get Battle Elephant, but no Elite Battle Elephant. So, I don't think they'd... Yeah, when, when they say elephant units, I mean, sure, okay, you've got the elephant as kind of a knight replacement, but you're really talking elephant archers and your siege. Because that's the thing, too. you got to remember with the armored elephant, they're benefiting from these sorts of bonuses, too. So, um, yeah, battle elephants, it's pretty cool. And, yeah, I mean, they're, 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 their stable's terrible. So you're going to be relying on your infantry. And then your archers, whether you're going Arbalest or uh, Elephant Archer. Um, yeah, so in fact, in fact, the suggested thumb ring means you're more likely to go Arbalest. 
Yeah, you got the full the full blacksmith text for your archers. Full blacksmith tech for your infantry. You're missing out on the final... Yeah, you really don't want to go battle elephants. I mean, maybe, you know, every game is different. But in general, you don't want to go battle elephants with this city. You want to go infantry and archers. That's kind of your main shtick. Okay. All right. Siege Workshop looks good. You're missing out Bombard Cannon, but you've got everything else. Navy, again, looks fantastic. You have a fully upgraded Navy. Yeah, these guys are going to be great on, on the water. Uh, University, you're missing Treadmill Crane and Architecture. I, don't, I tend not to get those, but that may be because of my my noobness. Uh, Urumi Swordsman. All right, all right. Yep, yep, yep. Monastery. Oh, the Monastery takes a big hit. You don't have Redemption. You don't have Illumination. You don't have Heresy or Fervor. Ouch. You are not converting any Siege units. The Siege is going to be a big weakness for these guys. Because I think they said for the Urumi, right? That was a, a, a weakness to specifically Siege for them. Mining camps, you're missing on the final mining camp text, you're missing on the final mill tech, but otherwise, all right, good stuff, good stuff, okay. And that was, again, for our infantry sieve, okay, cool, cool, cool. Then you have the Gujara, and they have, all right, the Chakram Thrower, the Srivamsha Rider, and then the Camel Scout. So, archers, once again, you have the Elephant Archers with Thumb Ring, so faster firing, more accurate archers, uh, Elephant Archers, but not really having that Parthian Tactics tech. And this time, you are missing the final armor upgrade, so they are going to be particularly uh, you know, weak and vulnerable. Of the three sieves we've looked at so far, uh, these guys are going to be the weakest of the bunch. They do have hand cannons, though, uh, but they're missing out on the Arbalest as well, so maybe not the best archery range in the game. Infantry, you are missing champions, and uh, Blacksmith looks good, so... Okay, you got two-handed swordsman, full attack. Spearman, no pikemen. Ouch. Ouch. Flashback to the Turks. Okay, you do not do well. Like, you, the spearmen are not an option for you. If you are dealing with the Franks or the Lithuanians, you need to go camel scouts. This is a strength, but it's also a weakness, because that means you have one option. You go camels, or you are doomed. If, if you have an opponent that hits the castle age, they get knights out, spearmen will not cut it. So you need to be prepared to go camels again against the Knight Civ. Camel Scout goes into Camel Rider, Heavy Camel Rider, okay. <clears throat> a little bit of a typo there, but all right. Yeah, you got the Shrivamsha Rider, pretty cool. So you have anti-knight options, anti-archer options, and then your Scout Cav uh, for raiding and that sort of thing. So that's pretty neat. You don't get elephants with this Civ. Wow. Okay, so I guess you go Gujara to counter the other <laughs> units of this of this DLC, because uh, the camels do great against elephants, but man, okay, no elephants for these guys. So stables almost feel like a really strong counter option, and then you want to go maybe infantry or possibly archers, but I'm not really feeling that. What is, what is your power unit here? I guess infantry. Uh, camels, camel units are, and elephant units are created. So, when it says elephant units created 25% faster, you don't get elephants with the sieve. So that means elephant archers and siege elephants. Huh. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. I see this civilization as a counter sieve. I see you, you know, you want to scout your opponent. Are they going archers or are they going calf? And then you go into camels or the shravamsha as your response to that. And I don't know, maybe the Shravamsha Rider has enough built-in damage to serve as kind of a mainline power unit. But, hmm, interesting. Okay. Uh, Siege, you are missing the Battery Rams. Well, yeah, you got the Elephants. Uh, everything looks good. You're missing Siege Onager. Uh, Blacksmith is not as impressive. You're missing the final attack for your melee, the final armor for your archers. So these are guys that maybe you want to you wanna deal with them in the Castle Age. Or you want to you fight in the castle age, I'm going to guess. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, University. You're missing Siege Engineer, Bombard Tower. Okay. Okay, so you're missing Siege Engineer. So their, their Siege is really not that great. Uh, okay. Chakram Thrower. Which, again, this, like... I'm going to guess is, like, an anti-infantry infantry unit. So, again, a, a very strong counter game for this civilization. Monastery, you're missing block printing and faith, but you do have redemption. I love block printing, but hey, all right, at least in the castle age, you've got a full tech. That's pretty nice. And their eco looks pretty good. You're missing two-man saw and guilds, but that's okay. Yeah, all right, good.
Good stuff. Final Civ here, the Hindustanis. All right, the old Indians. All right, you don't get Arbalest. You do have, of course, Hand Cannon. You have Cav Archer, not Elephant Archer. So these guys don't really use the Elephants. They do not have Elephants in their stable either. So... Okay, looks like a... Let's see here. If I go to the... The Blacksmith is almost complete, so you're, you're missing the final stable tech. Uh, but, so that means that you have fully upgraded archers and cav archers. You have fully upgraded infantry options. You are... No, no, you, they've got all that too. So you have thumb ring. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So cav archer is missing Parthian tactics. But otherwise, yeah, archers are a great option. Uh, hand cannons, of course, are going to be great with this sieve. I'm sorry, wait a minute. We don't have Arbalest. We don't have Arbalest, and we're missing Parthian Tactics. So, in the late game Imperial Age, Hand Cannons is probably your best choice. I'm just tripping over myself here. Infantry looks good, though. That we do have fully upgraded infantry. No, we don't. I'm misreading this. Dang it. That's the infantry armor. So, plate mail, the final plate mail armor is not great. What you do have are your camel riders, and those are fully upgraded. Which I think is a difference from the old Indians. Let me just check that real quick. Yeah, Indians did not have plate barding armor. So stronger Imperial Camel Riders. Uh, camel's going to be amazing for this civilization. A faster attacking, right? Wasn't that? Yeah, they attack faster. They do bonus damage versus buildings. This is pretty cool. Yeah. All right. You do get, okay, you do get the uh, siege elephants. So they, they do show up. You don't get them in the stable or in the archer range, but you do get them in the Siege Workshop. That's kind of cool. A little bit of flavor there. Um, the docks. All right. All right. Nice. They're, they're missing the fast fire ship. I love my fire ships, so that's kind of sad. Heavy demo ship, dry, dry dock, and shipwright. All right. If you don't get shipwright, then you are not a good late game Imperial Age Navy. Uh, that, that bonus is huge. University. You're missing architecture, bombard tower, keep, arrow slits, heated shot, and treadmill crane. Not the best university, but you do get ballistics. That's the main thing. Uh, you do get siege engineers, chemistry, of course, and murder holes. So that's nice. You got to love your murder holes, right? Uh, okay. Da -da -da -da. Castle, the Ghulam. Monastery. You don't get atonement. You don't get heresy. You get everything else. I I'd say that's okay. You don't. Those are not the most important texts in the world. Uh, town center. All right. Yep, Eco looks good. You're missing crop rotation, everything else is there. All right, cool. Well, that is my kind of review, uh, you know, just off the cuff here, of these four new civilizations, three with the DLC, one for free. Uh, we're going to miss you, Indians, but boy, this looks like a really, really fun, uh, fun civilization. So uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you think. How, uh, what do you see as the strengths or weaknesses of these civs? How do you combat them? Are you looking forward to the DLC? Let me know. This is the Iron Kaiser along with the Dynasties of India signing out.